So we'll stick with this. We'll start with five, then work our way down. All right, so I'll go with my five, you'll go with your five. Then I'll go with my four, you'll go with your four. Okay, so we, will, we are going to listen. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we're, I like we're back it. I like all right. It. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen. Coming at number five on my list, I have uh, Jamin Davis, the uh, inside linebacker out of the University of Kentucky. Um, you want to do yours first, or, sure, do, or sure. do I want to like break down why I have him? Let's do that. Hold okay, on, cool. I'll, I'll go. I'll go. Chasseret is my okay. Pick. I like it. All right. So the reason why I have Jamin at five, um, to me, he looks like a poor man's Michael Parsons in terms of similar build. But he's definitely, he could add more weight to him. I think he needs about five to 10 more pounds on him. But I think he's a very instinctive, very uh, productive player. His speed is the part that I question. And that's the thing that makes me nervous compared to a Michael Parson. You know what I mean? Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Wait, wait. what do you question about it? Well, because here's my thing. Not he's so- come out of nowhere. Correct, yeah. His 40 times, 441, mm-hmm. 437. Four, mm-hmm. Now, this is my thing. 441 four, timing, sure. Watch the tape. He does not play a four four, and that to me is that. That's why I say his speed. I don't care about what your forty. There is I a football look at, speed that absolutely. you can't explain. I, I want to see you. your game tape. A lot of guys test fast, or some guys, for example, test slow and play faster. He tests fast, but if you watch him on tape, he does not play a four four, and that to me is the reason why I say his speed is a question and why it makes me wonder. In terms of, I think he could be a great zone dropper, and they did that a lot of Kentucky with him, but he doesn't play. Four four. So now, if you're undersized and I'm looking at you as a man to man cover linebacker, that makes me concerned. So that's why, to me, his speed is in question to me because he might time that. You cut the tape on man. He does not play that fast, bro. Did you see his one interception he took back to the yeah, house? Yeah. I'm like, how is this four four? Seriously. So you tell me. He's got his own defenders catching right. up to him. Everybody's and it's catching. It's not him. even close. Yeah. And he did was, take it back to the house, but it was like did. a James Harrison taking back and to the it house. It was like he dove, like kind of <laughs> fell in that thing, made it a front flip. He was wobbly at the end. I'm like, bro, I'm about to question your athletic ability. You about to fall on your own feet. So 4-4 four, four on paper, sure. But you saw the same thing that I saw and that a lot of people see as well. That man ain't running like that. Not in game. That's my day. Yeah. yeah. That's what I was wondering. Like, yeah, why man. haven't I heard about this dude until yeah. all of a sudden this week? He's flying up draft mm-hmm. charts, and they got him as potentially a first rounder now. Yeah, like Mel Kiper, even like the top guys, Seriously, they were like, "Yes." I've seen articles of them yeah. talking about Jamin Davis, and yeah, I didn't really know who he was mm-hmm. up until people just started pointing him out, and then I started yeah. checking out the tape with Kentucky, and he mm-hmm. was jumping off the screen. Like he is productive. That's the thing. You watch him; he's got good size too. He does. He makes good plays. I just feel like for him, he's gonna need to add a little bit more to his frame. Five to ten max, but I think that'll make him more of an every down guy instead of just like a dime or or situational linebacker. Because to me, like going back to the speed element, for him to just be that, you're going to need to play faster than that, especially at the NFL level. When you talk about the guys you're going to match him up with on third downs, on these possession downs where you want a guy that can cover, he's not going out there and covering guys that are slow. It's going to be athletes out there. So that to me, I want to see like, all right, well, was it just a bad game that I keep seeing? Or, 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 are you always tired when you get a chance to show your speed? Is sure. that what it is? But it, it brings up some questions. So, yeah. I agree with you. Now, if he doesn't go first round and goes second, mm-hmm. I feel like that's intriguing. Yeah, very, very because intriguing. Because yeah. we've been talking about the running back position and the linebacker position, and also the offensive line mm-hmm. of, man, it's probably smartest if we go linebacker, there's more depth at running back. But if we're seeing him potentially in the second round, yeah. then we can maybe take the flyer on the running back or offensive line in the first round, get Very that true. depth with Jamin Davis in the second round. Like, would you be good with that? I absolutely would. But this is my thing. He can play 3-4 inside backer, but he's going to be undersized and not as explosive as Devin Bush is. If you're going to be undersized in a 3-4, you want to have some type of pop, some power, or at least some type of quickness with you, right? He, I don't feel like he's going to be enough of that to be that three-down linebacker that we will be looking for at that point. That's my oh, only thing. But I think he could excel as a 4-3 guy. And a 4-3 defense where he's covered up, I think he can excel in that role. Okay. Yeah. So I have Surrett as my fifth. I like his game, too. Ooh, it was between like him and game. Bolton. The main reason I have him there yeah. is I just think he'd fit better with Devin Bush, whereas Nick mm, Bolton, okay. He looked almost exactly like Vince Williams to me. See, you said Vince Williams. You know who I have? I said he looks like Sean Spence pre-injury. Okay. That's what it reminded me of. I watched him just like great natural instincts, understands, knows yeah. for the ball. But you could tell he's not the fastest. Undersized. Not, yeah, he's definitely undersized. But 
really good. He's a really good player, productive player, but you you could definitely see it though. Well, like I, I think Sorette might yeah. have a little bit more potential where he could fit some type of that hybrid yeah. that we talked about, safety, linebacker. Mm-hmm. He seems to have that prototype. Four six speed doesn't really jump out to you, but it looked like he played a he little bit faster. faster. Like he, yes. him and Jamin Davis probably on the field it looks like they flip. Yeah, yeah, I would say Surrett looks like he's just a tad faster. I'm not saying mm-hmm. Davis was completely slow. It, it right, just right. was like he's not this four 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 three right. speed that we're Low seeing. Low four four. You said four four three four four one. That's flying. Yeah, that jumps it's off four, the tape. You four, know what three, I mean? Dude, I'm telling you, <laughs> four three seven was the, I think the most recent one that he oh, found. Like, at. like four three. Like that's Shazier. He doesn't play nowhere near the speed that Shazier plays at. You think when you watch Shay on the field, you was like, yo, this dude looks like a bullet shot out. You know what I mean? Jamin doesn't play to that same speed. That's why from just like, I'm not hearing that 4-4, man. That's hand time. <laughs> <laughs> so who do you got four? But going back to Chaz, I do like Chaz. My only you concern. Got four? No, no, no. My only concern with Chaz is just the whole quarterback to inside linebacker. Is he gonna have that mentality of all right, not just coverage when I got to put my mouthpiece sure. in and bite down. Like, am I going to really do that in the AFC North as well? That was my other thought process with him. And I also thought to myself, in terms of how it relates to the Steelers, we already have kind of like that safety converted guy, very intriguing athlete in terms of Marcus Allen. When I think of him, sure. I kind of think of Chaz. But I think Chaz is going to come in better because he already has the experience as a linebacker. Well, that's what I was going to bring up because yeah. – Whenever you see some of these guys, and it probably even goes to JOK too, mm-hmm. how much better would they be coming in right off the bat than right. Marcus Allen? Even though mm-hmm. he was, what was he, a fifth or sixth fifth round, round pick yeah. for us? But he's been in the system a little bit. Mm-hmm. Like if you put him side by side right now, who's better right. at that inside linebacker position? I don't know. That's why maybe yeah. the JOK pick, maybe with you talking about Chaz Surrett, maybe it's just not worth it for us if we really yeah. believe in Marcus Allen. Well, and that's my thing. I don't know how the organization feels about him 100%, but they feel think highly enough of him to bring him back, to keep him around. So that to me is the, the part where it's like, all right, I can see that and how he is very similar to those guys because neither of him or Chaz are going to be the Vince Williams type, the thumper, right? These are coverage specialists. That's what they do. They're here for the hybrid guys. So when I think of that, I'm just like, well, we already got that. Do we want to... Is it is it high level enough? Right, is the right. Question. Is it that big of a difference? Now, some people might say it is. To me, I'm always just a little leery when it comes to guys, you know, making that jump from the collegiate level to the pro level because we know how difficult that can be for some people. Or for some people. So that was that. Yeah, like me, you man. said, the one positive is he has played linebacker. That's Very about true. it. Very true. All right. So now for me at number four. Now, yeah, yeah, yeah here I am. <clears throat> I have Aziz uh, uh, Ojalari. Yeah, and that's I, this, this I, is a sleeper see, pick. Huh? You see, I ain't, I ain't butcher, I ain't butcher his name either. <laughs> I've never no, even heard man. of him. So this is the edge guy out of uh, out of Georgia. Okay. So they're playing three four down there. Funny thing is, man, he's built just like Von Miller. Probably, okay. But he's about ten pounds. Like he's, he plays, he's six three two forty. Von about six three two fifty two fifty five range. So I would like him to have more weight on him. But the thing I love is this: his speed rush and his bend. Man, it looks beautiful. But not just that, because sometimes I, I'm real skeptical about just solely speed rushes at the collegiate level because at the NFL level, the tackles can move a lot better. You're not going to just run by these guys. But I've seen him use power moves. I've seen him go inside enough on tape and him playing in the SEC. You see him go go up against Alex Leatherwood. You see him go up against some of these top-tier offensive linemen, and he held his own. He looked good out there. So that's why, for me, I like this guy a lot as an intriguing dude. I think he's a a 3-4 outside linebacker solely. I don't like him at a 4-3. 4-3 okay. DN, I feel like he's just too thin. His frame is too thin. But he has that long, just wiry, edge rusher look about him. And I like it, man. Where do they have him going? Man, I've seen him anywhere. I'm trying to think. I saw him second round-ish a little bit. Some people want to hype him up a little bit higher than that. I don't think he's a first round type dude. I see second round, probably more than likely third. But to me, I just think as an edge rusher, what he brings – is going to be more than Nick Bolton or no more than Chad Surrett, more than, you know, Jamin Davis in terms of as soon as I bring this guy in, what he can do, what he's capable of. Wait, so you do you have him potentially playing inside or like no, no, no. I think jumping he's, around I think a he's little solely, bit? I think he's an outside 3-4 okay. guy. Like, yeah, absolutely. Are you thinking Bruce Irvin type of role? Nah, because he's not as thick as Bruce. Like, seriously, he looks like a, a combination of a poor man's Von Miller and – the frame of like 
Deion Jordan, but not as tall. Because you know Deion is what six, what six five, six six. So not as tall. But think about that long, just linear frame. Short. But not wiry like a Darius Leonard. He's not like that. He's thicker than that. That's why I keep saying Vaughn because Vaughn is still long and lean, but still has a little bit of body on him. You know what I mean? And that's when I look at uh, Aziz, I think of the same thing like that. So I'm assuming our top three is the same names, just potentially a different order. Mm-hmm. Do you have this guy as the best outside linebacker edge for three four defense? In turn, uh, no, no, no. Uh, in terms of just three four guy, yes, I like him like yeah. that. I know some people like uh, what's the cat, uh, Jason, uh, Penn State. Uh, yeah, I, it's not as productive. That's my thing. I don't. I'm not a combine or pro day guy. I want to see the tape. I want to see the productivity. And with Jason, he doesn't have the pass rush moves. I still question in terms of just his overall knowledge of the position as a whole, just certain things you see on tape. Whereas with um, with Aziz, he just seems like he understands the position. You know what I mean? And also, knowing one of the guys who was down there coaching him, in terms of Jarvis, I know what Jarvis knows from a football standpoint. And knowing what he is teaching that kid, I'm like, all right, I do like that as well. Because now you see, okay, he's committed to playing the right. He's going to do this thing right. He understands how to take it upfield, how to have a counter move and things like that. So that's why, for me, I have him where I have him. Okay, got you. So yeah. four, I have uh, Jamin Davis. Honestly, after the 40 times and after like <laughs> two of the highlights, I was like, I'm ready to put this dude at number one or oh, like two man. behind Parsons, yeah, yeah. man. I'm ready to put him above <laughs> JOK and Zayvon Collins. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to be level-headed here. We, yeah. got, we got a podcast. I want to be talking to uh-huh. an expert. Let's just put him at four <laughs> and then I could change my rankings later. Yeah. I'm good with him at four right now, just based yeah. off everything we've talked about, too. We're kind of on the same page with this. Yeah. So, yeah, four. But I like the upside. If he played as fast as that 4-4 four, four time, now I'm not saying he's a poor man's Michael Parsons. Now I'm saying this is Jamin Davis, Jamin Davis. Sure. But seeing how he doesn't play to the speed that he's timed at, it's just like, all right. I'm and there's got to be fast you are and there's got to be something too you don't know about this guy randomly right. when college football season's happening you don't mm-hmm. even have him on your draft boards at all yep. now all of a sudden he's almost a first round pick that's concerning but then you have the opposite sometimes which pisses me off where I'm saying there's this dude man you, he's been on your boards he's been yeah. on your radar for you know ever since he came into college saying he's a top prospect, but mm-hmm. little things, I'm thinking of B- Bontez Burfick specifically. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Because, dude, he was, if he would have came out after his junior year. I mean, he would have been a first-round pick. He would have been a top-five pick. Yeah, and then all easily. of a sudden, senior year, I forget what happened. He got, Character he got, issues. Yeah, he, had the, he, didn't, did he, get, he didn't get kicked off the seat. It was something yeah, that happened I don't, where he got in big. Like, he kept getting in trouble. I can't remember. Yeah. But then for him to go completely undrafted, I was like, you've got to be kidding me. You could have mm-hmm. easily taken him in the third or fourth round. Yeah. And you saw what type of NFL career he had. We've talked about this. Absolutely. Now you might you may not like some of the stuff he's done, mm-hmm. character issues, whatever it is. As a football player, he, he was ball. he was badass, man. He could definitely ball, man. But yeah, you see this guy. all the time, man. You see this yeah. all the time. So it's gonna be interesting though, man. That's like why it's said, a little both concerning. Of these guys are good though. <laughs> but they are but but I think both can be good. It's just how good is the question, right? And I think that's where the time will tell with these guys, but I like where we're at so far, man. Right. We're, we're, th- we're simpatico right now, man. Number three. Yeah, but hold on. Before we get to our number three, everybody in the in the chat, man, let us know your top five LB prospects coming out in this year's draft. I know we're sitting at, we're about to give our third person right now, but yeah, list your top five. Let's see how y'all compare with, you know, what we got going on oh, right yeah, now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Go Absolutely. And trust me, and I see everybody in here talking about running backs. We're going to get to them coming up <laughs> soon and o Lyman. Trust me. But yeah, drop your top five LBs coming out in this year's draft. All right, so for me, now at number three, I have J.O.K. right here, man. Jeremiah Owusu Koromoa. I didn't butcher his name. I'm so proud. No, of yeah, that was perfect. I'm proud of myself. I was practicing You said that, that confidently, too. Listen, I, I, was on, I was working out this morning, and I was watching tape, and I'm like, yo, I'm going to say his name right today. I'm going to say it right. And now that I've said it, I don't have to say it again. I'm just calling J.O.K. So yeah. <laughs> with J.O.K., I have him at three. Um, I like him because... Number one, he's very productive, but he reminds me of Jamal Adams. If Jamal Adams was a full-time world linebacker, that's what JOK looks like to me. Undersized, crazy productive, tough as heck. Sometimes his toughness overcomes his lack of size. Very similar to who? Jamal Adams. Jamal Adams plays wrong by the line of scrimmage, very productive in the backfield, can rush the pass, can cover. This guy right here, JOK, he's going to cover any tight end, any running back, pretty much any slot receiver with confidence. Like, I, I'm confident he can cover those guys, no issues. He's not going to be a guy that you're going to have sitting in there as a 3-4 interior linebacker, though, taking on blocks. He's That's not his game. And a 4-3 defense, I love him as a will linebacker on the backside, covered up, let him just run. 
He can run with the best of them. He can cover everyone. That, to me, is who he is, though. He's Jamal Adams is a full-time, wall-time line, uh, wall linebacker. Yeah, if he gained a little bit of weight, Yeah, that, that, that's what it would be to me. Yeah. yeah, so number three. Now, my reasoning is actually off on my top five. I'm with him here. Because I put Surrett at number five because I thought he'd fit the Steelers system better than Bolton. Okay. Now, for this one, I have – so it's the opposite. It's flipped. <laughs> I have JOK at two because Ooh, okay. I'm considering – JOK just in a vacuum the better player than Zayvon Call. It's not True. thinking about drafting for the Steelers. So Got you. Yeah, yeah. what I did for my five and six spot you. is different from my two and three. But okay. it, is, it is what it is. It's all feel. That's what it is. Talk. See for me, so I'm I'm doing similar things, but at the same time, I still in the end I take away if I would want them on the Steelers or not. And I'm just saying, okay, when okay. I'm watching this guy, if I'm a GM, sure. who do I think the better player is? Yeah, I guess I could say that so then. That's like I, what I, guess, I guess I could say that with 5-6 because yeah. Surrett over Bolton in today's NFL. Yeah. I could I could go with that then. And my, my, my peoples have let me know. Shout out to my boy Damo again. He let me know that JOK is from the 757. That's the crib. So now I'm even more a fan. I might move him up to number one on the list Damn. now because he's from the hometown. All right. I'm just, I'm biased. You know, I'm biased. All right. So yeah. I like the kid even more now from the 757. I think, was it Bethel? I think, yeah, like Newport News area. Yeah. Newport News for him, I want to say. So yeah, man, that's dope though. I, I like that. All right. All right. So three is Avon Collins. Okay. I do think if it was just Steelers, I like all yeah. the stuff that you've talked about with him previously and how he would fit a little bit better than mm-hmm. JOK. In our system, and then all, obviously already potentially the similarities of JOK to Marcus Allen. Very true. Where it may not make sense, but you know right off the bat when we did those first mock drafts mm-hmm. going in blindly, like I was a big fan of JOK. Yeah. So right off I mean, the... I mean, produ- his tape is hot. That's, that's what the, I mean. If I was hot, bro. if I was looking for someone yeah. like the Honey Badger or like yes. you said, Jamal Adams or mm. like Isaiah Simmons last yes. year, JOK is the guy. I, is that what we're looking for right now, though? Are you talking about in Pittsburgh? The Steelers. It wouldn't hurt. I wouldn't it hurt, but wouldn't. but everything we've talked about, yeah. probably not. Like, Zayvon Collins would be the better fit yeah. inside linebacker with Devin Bush. It's kind of just fits what we're doing. It does. It does. And I like Zayvon Collins, too. I, I do. I mean, he ran a four six seven, but I think it goes back to what we were saying. He looks a little bit faster yes. on the field. Very And true. he's got good size. The best size out of all these guys right yeah. now, man. And it's funny, man. I'm looking at the, uh, the chat. A lot of people kind of agree with that in terms of having JOK. I've seen... People flipping with JOK at two, Zavin at three. Then I see Zavin at two, JOK at three. It looks like that's the consensus between those guys, man. Let's see. I see some Chad Surrett's at five, though. Okay, okay, okay. Nice. Yeah, shout, shout out to Douglas Souza for that. He got Chad Surrett at five, Nick Bolton at four. Whoa. Zavin Collins at three, JOK at two, and then Michael it, Parsons he's, at he's one. He's not buying the Davis hype. He's not buying it. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. And then Cole Fitzsimmons has Nick Bolton at five. Jabril Cox at four, Whoa. uh Zayvon Collins at three, JOK at two, and then Michael Parsons. Uh Mike, yeah, Michael Parsons at uh one. Yeah. Ooh, all right, all right, all right. And then, oh, it looks like Travis Maxwell said he played with JOK at uh out in Hampton, actually, man, at the crib, man, 757 in high school. So all right, shout out the shout out to that then. All right. Dude, that'd be sick. Now I think we need to get him connected. I kinda, I, I, yeah. I'm, I'm digging it already. The, the hometown <laughs> seven five seven thing. I I like that. I like it, baby. All right. Now, for me at number two, I have Zayvon Collins here. I told you I feel like he's the Brian Urlacher comparison. Um, great size. I think he's, what, 6'4", 260. Long speed in terms of timed at 4'6", but you watch him when he plays. He plays I was way actually surprised faster. when I saw the 40. Yeah, you, yeah. you saying 4'6", surprised me. I watched the tape. I think he had a 90-yard a pick six. And he is pulling away from people. He looks faster than Davis. Like, like, like <laughs> seriously. And that to me was crazy. I'm like, this dude looks like a freak, like just moving down. Imagine Bud Dupree at inside linebacker. That's what I kept thinking. Watch. I'm like, yo, this doesn't make sense. Why are you running this fast? That's what he looked like to me. So the four six time right there, I'm just like, all right. But I will give you a little insight on the forties. A couple things going to that. Number one, if you don't train for the forty, you're not gonna run a fast forty. You can be a oh, fast player. This is like player. SAT stuff. No, absolutely. Without I that. hate that. Yes, for a fact. It's, it's a You're just trying to train it. to pass the test yes. as opposed to actually learn the so, knowledge. So, wow. for example, when we ran, when I was training for the 40, right, I was in uh, New Jersey and I was training with the guy, uh, Alto Bowden, right? I used to, uh, uh, you, no, he wasn't with the U.S. He was an Olympian. Um, i trying to think, what, I forgot what country. It might have been Trinidad, if I remember correctly. But he was the big coach in terms of, all right, when you're running your 40, think of coming out the blocks, right? But then he was like, just teaching us how you get aligned and how literally you're not even thinking of running. Fast. It's more so just like 
the first 10 steps. You need to have your head down, using your head as the momentum piece to drive you through here. Then talk about when you're finishing in terms of like, don't think of like, I'm running to break a tape, stick my head across and stop. No, treat it like, yo, you got to run through this thing because with the lasers at the combine, they go off your hip. Most people with the hand time, they're going off your head. So that's why with hand time sometimes is inaccurate because I might say, I'm going to go off the hip like the laser. You might say, I'm going to go off the first thing that crosses. So you can just see how it can vary a little bit, but the different teaching techniques can dictate four, six versus four, five, five, which is a big difference. Four, five, five versus four, four, eight, all based on those little techniques of, all right, how do you drive out of this thing? And don't do the, ah, you know, how some people, when they first take off, they, ah, don't do that because that gives away all the, all the, like the, they said, like the energy that you want to keep in, you want to act like you're holding your breath the first 10 yards too, because you, that feeling of like, oh, I can't breathe is going to make you go crazy trying to get out. And then you breathe, then you keep going. So it's a science to it. So that's my thing. I'm like, that 4'6 don't scare me because I watched the tape and he plays faster than that. And he's just a great athlete. Man, you watch him move in there, bro. He looks like yeah. a running back at inside linebacker. Just a 6'4", 260-pound running back playing linebacker. Great hands. Like I said, definitely a zone coverage guy, though. I don't like him in man coverage. I just think he's too big for that. He can't even bump out to play outside linebacker. I don't think... I would do it just because I think he's so productive that I wouldn't want to bog him down to just one side of the field. I think he's rangy enough that he can go sideline to sideline. He's good enough in coverage, especially zone dropping and just reading routes. I like him being, you know, being able to do that, but you can send him on blitzes. He can bend the edge. He's strong enough to hold the point. Like, I love this prospect, right? I love Zayden. I'm not going to lie to you. I love him. I know you've been. Yeah, you've definitely just said only positive vibes with Zayden Collins. I'm, I'm high on him. My biggest knock on him or question mark is his hips, if you put him in a 4-3 defense where he has to play a little bit more man-to-man coverage, where he's going to have to walk out more with the 4-3 because you don't have those outside linebackers walk, you know, coming off the edge or walking out. Now you're going to have to do more of that. I don't know from a hip standpoint if he can hold up man-to-man like that. Zone concept, though, I love him. I feel like you put it so in. be a good fit for us. And that's why I love him here in Pittsburgh, absolutely. Because what we do from a zone concept or even how we match up some of the routes – He's going to be more than athletic enough to do that. So, yeah. Sure. I'm with you, dude. I think just I, I love the, like you said, the range mm-hmm. of JOK, the, yeah. the ability to do man coverage against basically yeah, anyone. He can cover anybody. I love his I like too, that but in a vacuum. But, you know, I'm good with either one, man. If we pick JOK, I do think it's mm-hmm. more out of, hey, we just maybe think he's the better player as opposed yeah. to fit like you're talking about with Zayvon mm-hmm. Collins. But any of these three top linebackers, the, yeah. I'm good with. Really, I feel like the top three is separated. It's those top three guys in terms of Zayvon, JOK, and Micah, and then it's everyone else. So if we take any of those guys, if Mark, if, if Micah's available to us, that's obviously who you go with. But if any of those three guys we take, they're gonna ball out here. It's more so we're just splitting hairs in terms of all right. I like this guy to be a little bit bigger. I like that guy to be a little bit more in this scheme. I like this guy a little bit in that scheme. Either way, all three of those guys are going to be elite talents. They're all going to be able to come in and help your defense. You think people are saying, we don't want Jamal Adams? You think people are going to say, oh, well, uh, this guy's just a little undersired there. This guy, you know, I don't think he's as big as I would like him. They don't care about that. If you could ball, you could ball. Right. And he could ball. Yes. All three of those guys could ball, man. Yeah, as soon as you pick, yeah. if you pick one of these linebackers, everyone's mm-hmm. going to be excited. Absolutely. They'll figure Without out a way. A doubt, They'll man. figure out a way. Without a doubt. Number one, I mean, we, uh, yeah. <laughs> we already talked about this last podcast, Michael Parsons. Yeah. And he ran the 4 3 9. And that shows on the field, on the highlights Without and everything. Yeah, he's, he's, he's number so, one. So I, I, I want to correct myself, too. So last time I, had, I was talking about more Navarro Bowman, I watched him again. Darius Leonard. That's, okay. who I, that's who I feel. In terms of like, you see the wiry frame, right? Remember what I was saying? Like he, look, he doesn't look like he's two, I think you said 245, 246, you said? Yeah. And I was like, he doesn't look like that. The 6'3 frame, he looks like Darius Leonard to me. And he plays like him as well in terms of crazy productivity, not just as a run stopper. You see him getting after the quarterback. He can drop into coverage. He's more than – I feel like he's probably the best athlete of the bunch with those three guys as well. Like He just looks good. Yeah. And he's fundamental. He's not just a big hitter because that's the other thing I, I kind of turns me off with some of these players is like they're big hit guys but not tacklers. They don't wrap up. And we talked about the NFL level – you can hit you hitters don't last in this league because these guys have great contact balance. You're not gonna just knock down Nick Chubb with a a hard, violent shoulder. Like, nah, you're gonna have to wrap that grown man up and take him to the ground. Same with JK Dobbins, same with any of these running backs at this level. But seeing Mike, like, he is a fundamentalist. And I love that about his game, man. 
and the pedigree. You talk about Penn State, man. They call it LBU for a reason, man. I, I'm a big believer. There's in been it, bro. some flops, though. It, but it's been a lot more successful ones than flops. So that's that's how. Yeah. I'm what at, what do we have of recent memory? Sean Lee. He you he's would still say playing right now. You would say successful. Injuries just screwed yeah. him over. Uh, Which is crazy because if anyone Navarro Bowman, yeah, yeah. yeah. same with him. Injuries. Paz had a great. Yeah, but Bowman yeah. was sick. Like, no, no, I said, I said Bowman was crazy, but then he had the injuries. Remember, uh, after he blew the knee out. It started to slow down for him. A I consider bit, those man. three a success, though, right off the oh, bat. Absolutely. So that's yeah, three. Yeah. Aaron Maben, though. High pedigree pick, but not productive. He still lasted, what, four? Did he get four years? I don't know. I, I think th- he got four because he got two. That's up your way, Buffalo. Uh, no, because I know he had two and a half, almost three. Yeah, you could say three in Buffalo because we cut him. It was like during the offseason time frame. So three in Buffalo, I think one with the Jets. It was either one or one and a half with the Jets. So right around that three and a half, four year mark, I wouldn't call it a success. But I mean, you could though. It's depending on how you want to word it. I don't look at him the same way I think of Paul Pazlesny, yeah, the, Shiny, the like, three we just right, named. right. Are we missing any from recent memory? I mean, you could go back like Ooh, Jack I'm Him and no, I feel like I'm forgetting somebody else though, man. Bar Arrington, obviously. I'm definitely forgetting somebody else, and I'll remember as soon as we get off. I'm like, oh, that was the other guy. Yeah, it's of recent, of, of the yeah. last like decade. Recent, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, hmm. yeah. I don't know. Those are the three mm-hmm. that came to mind though. Yeah, but yeah, we're both agreeing with Michael Parsons, man, as the number one guy. And I didn't realize this. They said he used to play a uh, DN and running back in high school as well. Because I was looking at some of him uh, when he's on the edge coming off. I'm like, yo, you might know a little something here. And I was like, <laughs> all right. So you got a little bit of that pedigree in your system. I like that. 